Greetings and salutations, ladies and menfolk. Welcome to another episode of Game Break. I am Charles, coming to you today with another episode of World and Economica. Now, last time round, as I remember it, we actually managed to figure out a possible plan of what to do with this uh, financial challenge. But we ran out of time before we could actually try it out. Now I'm hoping that's what we do today, but I don't know. We'll have to find out. We'll just have to play and see where the story takes us. I grabbed the laptop, flew out of my room, and headed to the living room. The living room had returned to silence, and Lisa wasn't around. Immediately turning around and running down the hall, I headed up the steep stairs to the second floor. Along the way, I saw the light on in Lisa's room. Without hesitation and without knocking, I opened the door to Lisa's room. Please don't have me censor this. Don't let it be something I need to censor. A surprised Lisa turned around. She was in the middle of taking a few books from the shelf. Her hair was still damp, and her eyes were red and puffy. She looked like a girl who lost her way on a rainy day. I didn't want to see Lisa with such a face. That's why I opened the laptop and shoved the screen in the dazed Lisa's face. Yeah, that would be my reaction as well in that situation. Like, the hell is this? Why are you showing me this? There's a way. Lisa sniffled like a kid. I want you to convince Hagana. Huh? I want to borrow her talents. I explained everything to Lisa. Ten minutes later, both of us were knocking on Hagana's door. How's this gonna go down? Are we actually gonna get backgrounds at some point? That would be nice. Something to look at? Even when we knocked, Hagana didn't come out. Hagana, are you awake? Lisa asked in a small voice. If she had exhausted herself from crying and fell asleep, we could just wait until morning. Mm, sorry. Whatever painful things may happen, things always became more manageable if you could get past the dark night. By that logic, she would be calmer tomorrow and broaching the subject to her then might have been better. That's what I was thinking. But after Lisa knocked on the door and called out, she put her ear by the door softly. At that moment, her expression changed. As if she had heard a horrifying, revolting sound, like the scraping of metal on metal, before I could ask, Lisa put her hand on the doorknob and turned it slowly. She opened the door quietly, as if something in the room would be damaged with the slightest shock. The hell are we going to find in there? The door slowly opened, and the light from the hallway flowed into the dark room. Lisa opened the door, but didn't but didn't try to enter the room immediately. 
I thought it was odd, but quickly saw the reason. Hagana's room was even barer than the one that I had rented out, and it was completely dark. But within that dark room, there was a place where the darkness was even deeper. What the light fell upon was blackness, a black darker than darkness. A sight to which I didn't know what to say, didn't know what to think. A sickening taste filled my mouth. In a corner of the room, Hagana was hugging her knees and crying. Oh. Hagana. When Lisa finally called her name, Hagana's body shook like an absolutely terrified child. Hagana, I have something to talk about. But there was no further reaction to Lisa's words. It seemed like she was trying to shrink her already slender body down even more, hugging her knees desperately and burying her face in them. From the looks of it, instead of crying out of sadness, it seemed more like she was crying out of anger. Squeeze down, shrink even more, if only I just didn't exist in the first place. That was the kind of anger I felt from her. Hagana. Lisa spoke softly and slowly stepped forward. It wasn't a big room, so she was in front of Hagana in a moment. Hagana's body quivered, then changed position. I had thought it was impossible for her to get smaller, but she pulled her feet in tightly, pulled her head down more, and then moved her arms from her knees up to cover her head. So? Huh? I'm so... Hagana was shaking so much that I could see it all the way from the door. Lisa's profile hardened, harder than if you'd shouted any insult in the world at her. Lisa was furious, but she wasn't angry at Hagana. Just by looking at Hagana, I could understand, in a way. She was in the corner of the dark room, protecting her head, visibly shaking. No matter how angry Lisa was, Hagana should have known that there was no need to be this afraid. Even Chris, of all people, probably hadn't been this terrified. Hagana had lived a life where she had to tremble in the corner, protecting her head, if she made any sort of mistake. Hagana hadn't raised her head and didn't seem to realize that the person in front of her was Lisa. She simply continued to apologize, so desperately the words wouldn't come out. What Lisa was probably angry at was the rain of misfortune that had come down upon Hagana. Lisa crouched down in front of the terrified Hagana, sensing that Hagana flinched back. Even though there was nowhere left to retreat, she pulled back. Lisa gently grasped Hagana's thin wrists then wrapped her hands around her shaking fingers. Oh. Hagana, it's okay. It's all right. Gently putting her head against Hagana's, Lisa whispered over and over. It seemed like each time Hagana said that she was sorry, Lisa would say that it was all right. Calm down? She murmured softly in Hagana's ear. Somehow, she even seemed to be smiling in enjoyment. 
Hagana was making sobbing sounds. Lisa didn't rush. Eventually, Hagana's small head moved. Her teary eyes peered through her disheveled hair. Hagana, do you know who I am? Lisa asked. Hagana stared at Lisa with a teary, exhausted face. Eventually, with fresh tears overflowing in her eyes, she nodded slowly. That's a good girl. Saying that, Lisa embraced Hagana's head. I'm sorry. Hagana repeated herself again, but not in the childlike way she had before. It was a clearer, more well-defined thing. Okay, Hagana, to be honest, your elbow really hurts. The bruise on Lisa's face was apparently from Hagana's elbow. She must have struck with quite a bit of force. But that was something like an accident. I'm not angry. But it's true that I don't approve of going to Mr. Toyama without thinking about the consequences, along with what you did there. Hagana fell silent, but it was different from when she had been terrified. While she was in Lisa's arms, the fact that Hagana wanted to make an excuse was apparent even to me. Thanks to the situation, even Lisa smiled wryly as she held Hagana. But that was something you, that you did for me, right? Lisa asked as she once again embraced Hagana. The darkly dressed small girl in Lisa's arms nodded repeatedly, like a heartbeat. Those feelings make me happy, very much so. Hagana looked up, and Lisa met her gaze full on with a smile. Hagana had calmed down for the most part but now once again burst into tears. Lisa cradled Hagana's head gently against her chest. Hagana howls by the door. If you cry too much, he's going to notice. Exclamation point. I saw her shrink down in Lisa's arms. You're using me for that. I glared at Lisa, but she only winked at me out of the corner of her eye. Unable to object, I hid myself by the side of the door. And also, Hal's got a few things he wants to talk to you about. Considering their relationship so far, that's a fair response. Huh, you shouldn't say that. I couldn't hear it, but apparently Lisa heard something. It was probably something like she had nothing to say to me, anyway. I heard that you said terrible things about Hal. He was really hurt by that. While explaining the investment, investing contest and the possibility of using Hagana's talent in math, I had also told that whole story. If she thought that I was some worthless punk who never worked and stole money from houses, this whole plan wouldn't even stand up, not to mention my pride. However, I was silently cheering on Lisa to say more. Hagana should learn that her words could hurt other people. Plus, I heard that all of that was a misunderstanding on your part. Lies. That word I could clearly hear. Right after, I heard Lisa laughing lightly. Hagana, you're surprisingly childish, you know that? 
Lisa was very good at jabbing at a person's pride. Just maybe I might not have to sell my books. What? Thanks to Hal. From the sound of cloth rustling, I knew that Hagana had raised her head. Along the way, you could almost hear the sound of her face scrunching up at Lisa's words. Hal seems to be working properly. Well, I wonder if it's called work. I don't really get it, but in any case, he's earning money. Quite a bit of it. Really? Really, even I'm a bit surprised. It was quite a bit of money, so it seemed Hal was afraid and didn't say anything. Well, it makes sense. If you can't trust Hal, then he can't trust you. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I peeked in the room, Lisa was combing Hagana's hair with her fingers, while caressing Hagana's stubborn face. But Hal said that he'd lend us the money he worked hard to gather, under certain circumstances. A whole 50,000 mules, you know? At Lisa's words, Hagana made a pained face. Hagana had thought that she was unable to gather that sort of money by herself, and had no choice but to sell herself. But, as you know, Hal's got that rather level-headed personality, so there are conditions. It's that you lend him your skills. Huh? Hagana was clearly surprised. Her eyes had been on the verge of sleep as Lisa brushed her hair, but now they were wide open. Do you understand? Hal is saying he wants to borrow your skills. Mine? Yes, your skill at math. If Hagana had been quite literally purchased from the earth and bought here for her math abilities, then the proposal was a very awkward one. But I had absolutely no intention of saying I wanted to buy her powers. Lisa had also confirmed that point very thoroughly with me. It seems that he wanted to say it much sooner. But you got furious, shouted, and kicked him in the leg so he couldn't say it. I forgot about that. Hagana sulked childishly, childishly and looked down. Elisa laughed, and her gaze drifted up while still keeping her head down. I don't think there's any other conditions than that. Hagana, someone truly needs your one best skill. And that would save Lisa, and moreover be useful to me, and probably would even save Hagana herself. If her skill in math could bring success in trading, then Hagana would have found a way to make money for herself. It was the same as obtaining a tool to solve many of the problems that caused her all this pain for so long. Hagana. Hagana slowly looked up when Lisa called her name. What, what would I do? What? Um. There, Lisa's words hesitated. Inside, I was a bit exasperated, but Lisa didn't seem very knowledgeable about this sort of thing, so there was no helping it. Hal! Lisa called out. As I sat next to the doorframe, with the back to the wall, I answered her. What? Explain things to Hagana, please. At Lisa's words, I half rose, then stopped short. Does that mean I can go over there? Hagana probably didn't want me to see her teary face. 
Lisa laughed a bit at me when I asked her that question, as it contained a bit of self-deprecation. How about it, Hagana? Lisa asked the question, and apparently Hagana whispered something in her ear. After a bit of whispering, Lisa answered. Can you wait just ten minutes? What? When I replied, Lisa left some words with Hagana before standing up. Then, sticking her head out of the room, she looked down at me and spoke. A lady needs time to be presentable. Is that so? Just a minute, okay? Still seated, I dropped my shoulders and made to go back to my room while shaking my head. Lisa called out to me from behind. Hal. Now what? Thank you. Saying that, when I turned my head around, Lisa then popped back into the room. For a while, I continued to stand, looking backwards. It's not like we had solved any issues this very moment. But even then, the rundown and rusty gears seemed to start moving again. Whether they'd end up turning smoothly, no one knew. However, as I returned to my room, a lightness was in my chest. And we are going to have to leave this here for now. I really hope that we're able to explain this, and hopefully Hagana is going to be all for this, because this really is the best plan that they have, and probably the best hope they have of getting the money that everyone needs. So we're going to have to wait until next time around to find out if Hal can actually convince Hagana to team up with him. I have a feeling this might be a somewhat info-heavy episode coming up, if the past 10 episodes or so have not been any indication, but once you start getting into economics, they really go and dive right in. But until then, thank you all for joining me. As always, hit that subscribe button, click that thumbs up, post in the comments what you think of the story so far. Do you think Hal's actually going to be able to convince Hagana to join up? How hard is it going to be? Will it take an episode? Will it take two? Three? Twenty? Oh god, I hope not twenty. I, I want to be kind of finished with this story eventually. Especially since episode two is either soon to be released or has been released. But again, thank you all for joining me. And until next time... Go have some fun, go be creative, go play some games, experience some stories of your own.